so let's take a look at the Grenada team. So there's the squad, the starting lineup for this match. Uh, Lanaya, uh, that's Gibraltar, my apologies. Uh, goalkeeper, D and Gooding. Goal defence, Denise Cameron. Wing defence, Rene Cooper. Centre, Tiffany Frederick. Wing attack, Sharon Jeremiah. Goal attack, Cecile Roberts. And goal shooter is Leticia Cato, a very imposing figure indeed. There's the uh, Gibraltarian team. And note, friends in Gibraltar, I said Gibraltarian. <laughs> and they're coming out onto court now. Let's take a look at their squad lineup. There's a, a, a match a matchup to look forward to at, the, at that end of the court. There's the squad that's travelled. The starting lineup: Lanaya Okanya in uh, as goalkeeper, goal defence Kellyanne Samperi, wing defence Zayanya Reyes. Uh, centre Joel Moreno, wing attack Janice, uh, Janice sorry Moreno, and uh, goal attack Kelly Shari, and uh, goal shooter is Megan Martinez. So that's the lineups. It's the last game of the day. Uh, we saw a glimpse there, Nolene, of uh, the task at hand for Gibraltar at uh, one end of the court. Um, uh, this this will be a, a Grenadian win, but. Um, what do you think, uh, what are you expecting from, from this match? I think both teams have already been playing today, so um, fitness is going to be a big factor in the game to see if they can last the, the full four quarters. Um, the Gibraltar defence are going to have their work cut out um, trying to stop the ball getting into Cato. Um, and I think what they'll be trying to do is keep as much pressure over the ball into the feeds into the circle. But Cato is a very dominant um, figure there and it is going to be a hard job for the defence to try and um, cut that out. Yes, the mismatches in height is definitely something that we've uh, seen with the, the developing European nations up against uh, either some of the larger European nations or, or our guests from, from the US and Grenada. There is a definitely a, a physical mismatch and we had T. Roa Keenan in as co-commentator for the last game and she was uh, surprised that Israel didn't change their tactics slightly to try and get in, in front of the in front of the defenders and, and play low flat balls in rather than uh, going over the top which they seem to have a, a propensity to do. Do you think Gibraltar well I'm, I'm hoping Gibraltar were watching that and perhaps learning something from that I think it's um, this kind of opportunity to get these matches for the developing nations is is crucial because whenever you're playing and preparing for these sort of situations, you're only really playing with what you have or what you're um, used to playing against. So maybe you're used to one style of play, whereas at least this will start to get them used to thinking about um, having to adapt their, their style of play. Um, you know, with the um, the flavour that, um, that Granada will bring to the match is going to have to make um, Gibraltar adjust what they're doing and what they would normally be used to playing. Uh, Gibraltar uh, on the attack here. And uh, an, an interesting little leaping technique for conventional, uh, but unfortunately with the same end result. Gibraltar do take the rebound though and can work the ball back in uh, to Kelly Shirey. Uh, Kelly Shirey was certainly uh, one of the players who impressed in the in Gibraltar's first match. Here she is on screen now. Plenty of space there in the centre for Shirey. Can she convert? She's not been able to, and that's uh, that's definitely a, a chance gone begging for Gibraltar.
So Trinidad are certainly not uh, streaking out into a lead here by any means. And an opportunity here for Gibraltar to close the gap to two. And Shari pops that one in. And uh, Gibraltar with a chance to bring it back to a point. They've started quite brightly, Nolan. Indeed. I think they're, they're playing with no fear at the minute. Um, they're finding nice space and then getting plenty of shooting opportunities. And, uh, I'm putting them on. That last opportunity uh, greeted with uh, a big cheer by the fans just uh, down to our left now. Grenada with uh, a chance to come back and Cato's not going to miss a chance like that. You wonder if perhaps uh, Lanai or Kanya, uh, the goalkeeper for Gibraltar, is um, bouncing up and down the spot just to make herself feel just that little bit taller. <laughs> I think what the only thing that she can do at the minute is try and confuse the space for the feeder of where to place the ball, um, and then she needs to be supported out the field um, or out the court with, by her wing defence and goal defence, putting pressure on the pass so it, it makes it a more difficult ball in so that she can get her hands on any of those potential misfeeds. Three bites at that there for Shari and uh, unable to convert them. Uh, missed opportunity, I suppose. Uh, we, we said it earlier on in the day, when you have those kinds of opportunities, as one of the, the the smaller nations competing in this tournament, you really have to you have to take the easy ones. And that consistency in, in front of goal is key to keeping the the gap down. That's a good ball there. Down the line in the direction of Sharon Jeremiah and Cato can then finish that off. And there we see what happens. You miss one chance at one end and all of a sudden two more points are scored at the other. There is Jeremiah again, using Cato's height to good effect uh, and really giving Okanya no chance at all. She's got in on that one and yeah. twice the double interception there uh, by the Gibraltarian goalkeeper. And That's good a move by play into the circle there. Good move by Gibraltar and finished off well, and that was uh, a well worked goal. That will be a real boost for the Gibraltar team as well because they know that they can get um, some tips, some turnovers and then bring them up and score. Gibraltarian. I have been instructed, I think possibly by the, the, the person that runs Gibraltar, like the whole, the, the whole peninsula, not just the netball. I have been instructed. Gibraltarian. I'm sure they're watching uh, with interest. They were uh, excellent hosts of the Under-17 European Tournament earlier in the year. I've never been to Gibraltar. Have you visited? No, never been either. If you're from Gibraltar, mm -hmm. if you're watching at home, get on Twitter. The hashtag is NEOpen16 and give us the top five reasons to visit Gibraltar because I'm fascinated. Uh, we had, uh, yep, they were a, a very supportive and uh, able host and uh, helped enormously in getting coverage of the under-17s online and out and marketed and uh, it was greatly appreciated uh, by the people that watched it and got excellent viewing figures from not just uh, the European nations but much further afield as well, viewers in Australia, New Zealand and uh, the US and South Africa. It's fantastic to see the uh, development tournaments getting that kind of exposure.
Six minutes left in the quarter. Grenada 12, Gibraltar 6. And a little bit of wrestling in the middle. Cecile Roberts uh, takes that to the far side and leaves it to Cato. Cato finishes. The attacking uh, triangle for Grenada, made up of uh, wing attack Sharon Jeremiah and goal attack Cecile Roberts, who takes that uh, on the line and finishes with a plum. So steely focus about her taking that shot. And then, of course, uh, Letitia Cato. That goal shooter, just a slight hiatus where one of the kits is uh, fixed. Gibraltar on the attack. Possibly an, a, an easier pass there uh, across the circle. Yeah, or the option is also available straight into the goal shooter there. Um, the wing attack just wasn't able to connect with it at that time. A good work by the Gibraltar defence to bring that out safely. Kelly and Sam Perry there at, uh, in goal defence doing good work down the line. There's the direct ball into Shauri. Shot just drifting slightly right. But she'll get another shot at it. And once again, OK, third time lucky. There we go. One of the things that we observed about the about Ireland in the last game, uh, for which you were absent, but uh, in the big games, if they want to win, they need to be making those chances first time rather than relying on the rebounds to get second or th uh, third bite at it. And I suppose if you look at Gibraltar, the game that they'll be most interested uh, in in winning will be the match against Israel, and uh, for both teams. You know, taking those opportunities first time and, and not relying uh, when, when you're up against an evenly matched opponent, if you see what I mean. Absolutely. Uh, it would be, be interesting to see what the shooting statistics were like um, at the end of this quarter because Gibraltar have had plenty of opportunities um, and it maybe would make the scoreline a lot closer if they were able to get those first time um, shots away. Certainly three or four goals have uh, been squandered which would make the scoreline look uh, a lot healthier. Shari with that characteristic uh, technique of just uh, going onto her back foot and shooting uh, on one foot. Who wants that, shouts Cecile Roberts. I want it, says Cato. And who's going to argue? That's a good pass into the circle and uh, a really good shot there from Martinez. Most of the goal scoring opportunities falling to Shauri in this uh, first quarter, but Martinez showing there that she can join the party. Grenada just keeping. Uh, Comfortable eight point margin at the moment. Another one goes astray from Shari. And Cato in uh, quite a bit of space there.
into the last minute and uh, better shot that time from Shari. Takes Gibraltar to 10, seven behind at the moment as we reach the last 30 seconds or so of the quarter. Cato into the circle, finds Roberts and back to Cato and that should be simple for her. Do we know how tall Kato is? I don't think it says we have that information. We've got information about almost everybody. Oh, here we go. Six foot six. James, as we see in Scotland. End of the first quarter, Grenada 18, Gibraltar 10. Uh, and uh, a competent performance from Grenada without uh, doing anything spectacular. And as we said, Nolin, just a few more converted chances from Gibraltar. And that score actually starts to look a lot healthier for them. Absolutely. I think Gibraltar can be very happy with that performance in the first quarter there. Um, you know, they are getting the shooting opportunities. They aren't falling just at the minute, but um, fingers crossed whenever they just start and maybe get into a bit more of a flow in that shooting, um, you know, with that shooting action, um, that they, they can keep, you know, keep getting the opportunities and then start converting them as well. Certainly getting into the right spaces. So a uh, little bit of chatter going on uh, in the... Grenade in camp. Let's uh, listen in and see what we can uh, find out about how they are feeling at the end of the first quarter. Stay, stay down there. Stay down there. If it's if she if you have to pass it to you, you're not you're more into the ball. Okay. Sharon, you have to drive towards. Okay. Drive okay. towards it. Two, 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 no. two of you. Two of all you. Mm -hmm. The two of all you have to come for the center pass. You're not coming for the center pass. Yes, but it's going to arrive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 They have you have to stay there, stay there, they have to walk and bring it down. They have to walk and bring it down. Stand up inside there, let them pass the ball. You guys have to walk and bring it down. Get the ball on all the ball except look inside. Why are we looking inside? That's the first look. Inside, if it is not there, they will find left and right. Why are we get the ball looking stupid and looking nervous? There's no pressure, there's a fool now. We don't have to believe that, we don't have to know that. There's no pressure. What we say we want to do, we say we short in our defense, so the attackers must come for the center pass. So you must have, she coming for the center pass, you are steering all the way back, she, and she not go for none. Go to the wing attack, actually, you go to the center, and make sure you mark that center after the pass. Come on, guys, the work should be easier. The work should be easier, we're not playing anything back, everything must go forward. So, Coach Oberon there, um, some uh, fairly healthy debate, and, uh, particularly coming from Cecile Roberts, who you can just see on the, the left of your picture there, just complaining about a lack of communication going on in the team, and the, the coaches, all three of them, uh, really uh, pushing the, the players more to uh, drive towards the ball and, and, and not hang back as much. Um, this is an opportunity for Granada to, um, to play against a different style that they haven't necessarily played before. So that it's maybe exposing different things where they need to talk a wee bit more to work out who's covering what ball or dropping back and, and things like that. So um, these quarter times are ideal to try and get those um, ironed out and then make a difference then in this, this quarter. So start of the second quarter, a couple of changes to tell you about. Goalkeeper... Deanne Gooding has gone off to be replaced by Denise Cameron uh, and uh, 
Kira Fortune has come on at goal defence. And then at wing defence, uh, Renee Cooper has been replaced by Carissa Thomas, the youngster of the team. And for Gibraltar, a couple of changes for them as well. Victoria Cross has come on at wing defence. Uh, in place of Kellyanne Samperi. Uh, Manaya Okanya has moved to goal defence. And Zenia Reyes has moved from wing defence back to goalkeeper. So a little bit of a, a reshuffle, more than substitutions there for the Gibraltarian team. And the Apologies for that little correction on the screen. There are up to 11. And somebody goes flying on the far side. Looks like uh, Joel Moreno. Trying her best to stay on side, but just not able to hold it. Mm. Oh, and, and I think that's pretty much the first one Kato's missed mm -hmm. uh, in the match so far. Safe enough to get the rebound. Mm. One would think. Mm. Uh, there she is again, and that's quite comfortable. And again, there's two quick points for Grenada, and they move on to 19. And that's careless. Uh, 20, my apologies. Uh, that's careless from Moreno, just uh, throwing the ball out of play. And it's amazing the way those missed opportunities just create an opportunity to get some three goals on you know on the on the bounce without reply on this occasion though gibraltar have won the ball back oh it was really unlucky it was a nice space there just under the post and then uh, unfortunately just weren't able to connect with it yeah, surely just uh, missing out in the circle there and Slender wing attack, the figure of uh, Sharon Jeremiah driving that ball into Cato. Moves Grenada on to 21 and they come again. And there's Roberts this time popping the ball up for Cato. Keeps a balance and trickles one in over the end of the net. Do you sense just a little lift in intensity from the Grenadians at the start of this quarter? I think so. I think the chat that um, Coach would have had with them there at uh, quarter time has really given them a wee bit of a renewed focus um, that they need to play at intensity because um, Gibraltar are sticking with them um, just despite they can't get the ball in the net on, on their first opportunities. Well, Sherry's managed to get that one in at the first opportunity. Sends it wide to Jeremiah again and back into Cato. And such an efficient move that for Grenada. just as a, a reflection of one of the challenges that faces a developing nation like Gibraltar, looking at some of the stats on, on their players. And uh, Keisha Moreno, for example, uh, seven caps, but the first was in 2006 and the last was in 2015. And there's a cap, you know, almost every, every year, but over a period of nine years and ten years now that she's uh, playing in 2016 
Seven, seven caps is not, not a huge return and that's just a, a reflection of the, the paucity of matches that's available for these teams. Absolutely, and this is why this challenge section of Netball Europe is so important and vital to these teams to get exposure playing against other teams of a similar level, but also um, you know of a different style with the likes of the USA and Granada being here this weekend. It's an opportunity for the likes of Gibraltar to get four or five good quality matches um, in one opportunity. And just a miscommunication there between the goal shooter and goal attack. Results in a loss of possession. Looking at Gibraltar's preparation for this tournament, you know, they're coming into it with a, uh, a schedule or a regime, if you like, of two courts, so two court sessions a week, fitness once a week, uh, and maybe a local club match once a week as well. How, how would that compare to, say, the, some of the bigger countries? I mean, not necessarily England, but Scotland, let's say, or, or Northern Ireland. Um. I think the, the main difference potentially would be the, the volume of um, on-court sessions um, and possibly an extra um, fitness session in there as well. Um, but then again, it's, it's hard because a country has to work within the means and the, the facilities that they maybe have access to, the, the coaching time that they have access to and um, you know the, the S&C resources that they have available to them. Shall we uh, with uh, another goal? for Gibraltar and they're just hanging on at the moment Gibraltar they're, they're, they're sticking sticking with them although uh, the gap has opened slightly to 11 points 25-14 as we reach the approach the halfway point in the quarter the Granada defence are um, really confusing the space again for Gibraltar um, and, and where the open space is with their their rangy hands and um, their ability to cover the space. It's just forcing Gibraltar into errors there in the last quarter. Big lofted pass uh, into the circle for Cato. Would have cleared most other players, I suspect. There's another one. Converted with similar ease. How do you compete with that? Really? It's a lovely <laughs> fade there in from Roberts as well, and that's what makes it difficult. Whenever it's a good fade into the right space, then it's very difficult for any defender to, to get round. Okanya, she just has a, a long slog ahead of her, um, trying to keep just moving around, trying to confuse the space, and then as soon as there is a feed that isn't spot on, that she can hopefully get a hand to. Well, she's still clapping encouragement for her teammates, the chin's still up. It's an almighty task in front of her. And, uh, great interception, but Okanya reacting well to that, to the danger. Gibraltar have worked that out well. Play has been stopped. Kick malfunction. Was that contact there that contact, um, uh, against Martinez? Looked like it. Another one of those high passes out of the reach of Ocaña, very much in the reach of Cato. 
Granada really in a groove now. That's a three centre or three pass centre pass. And they very quickly extended uh, their lead to 17. 31 14 now. 31 14. A big gap. And uh, six points at least, I think, now without reply. Earlier in the day, Israel went certainly 10 minutes without a goal at one point against Ireland. Just seemed to get dragged down and stuck. Napoli, it really is a game of momentum. Once you get a flow, um, once you break an opposition centre pass a couple of times and your score's quickly off your own, then it's really easy to keep that momentum going and suddenly a gap really does open up. Clever pass there from Cherry as she drove towards the circle. Just giving the defender the eyes. Not such a clever pass from Joel Moreno. And uh, allows Grenada to break. And Sharon Jeremiah gets it into Cato. Just the first side in the centre. That's a, a timeout in call. As, uh, the ball bounces away. Again, uh, nice Sherry giving, giving the defenders the eyes there, a little dummy pass, uh, and worked to good effect, a good one-two into the circle. And scores. Uh, yeah, just the first signs I was in the, in the middle of saying of a couple of heads just going down in the midfield there of uh, Gibraltar, just uh, John Moreno just maybe getting a little bit frustrated with couple of wayward passes. Gibraltar just need to settle themselves down and get this next centre pass and bring it to goal and um, steady themselves then for the next two and a half minutes. Nice patience here, just waiting for the, the right space to open up and they get the ball in there. Unfortunately, can't get the shot away. Martinez with uh, another opportunity to spot it, but um, possession uh, wasted again there. Jeremiah again can feed that ball into Cato. She almost doesn't need to look where she's putting. Yeah. Just, you know, over the shoulder. Now, I simply don't believe that no one from Gibraltar has got in touch to tell us how great Gibraltar is. <laughs> Getting plenty of support from Netball Northern Ireland. Great to hear Knowles 173 on commentary for the last match. Hi, yeah. everybody in Northern Ireland. <laughs> We're very appreciative of your efforts earlier on. As you say, Grenada just with uh, a little bit of momentum at the moment and just easing away. 20 point gap opened up now. And, uh, a 
little bit of a tight, just a, sort of snatched at that little bit of that shot. Shirey. Uh, but Martinez rectifies the mistake. You better move on to 17. So, better ball by Joel Moreno. There goes the hitter. It's the end of the first half. And Grenada with a commanding 20 point lead, 37 to 17. Uh, and a much better quarter for them, obviously, heeding the words of uh, Coach Oberon. They're looking very comfortable there. Um, they're finding the space easily for Cato, um, and the defence are creating a lot of opportunities. Gibraltar maybe won't be as happy with that performance because they're just making a lot of unforced errors, not necessarily what um, Granada are forcing them to do, but they're, they're maybe just dropping balls or breaking, um, and they'll be maybe a wee bit disappointed with that. Are, and see the crew are, are down there in the Grenadian huddle. Let's uh, hear what they have to say. Closer to us, eh, Tiffany? A little come on better for the centre passes, but they still, at times, they still stay a little high up. There's nobody really defending on it, so drive lower down. Drive lower down on top of the circle where it's easy to make the pass. So in the same zone where it's easy to make the pass, good holding, but you have to be a little more aggressive on the top, right? Go anywhere. Right? That was better. I can see. I can see. You can see. That's how they're coming out for center pass. I oh, want you to stay closer. I'm going to say she goes down. She goes down. I'm going to say that little lady is fast. She's fast when I'm walking her like that. Yeah, she gets in our foot. You need to be on the ball of your feet and remember as soon as they pass, yeah, you need to do that. But because you're so far, time you coming up, she gone already. So remember, you have to do and then you take the two steps. Don't even think about jumping, just two quick steps, right? And then if you find that is happening, then all you have to do more is to turn your back. So are you not doing that part because you're still doing it and you want to block? But when you're doing that now, remember you can't see what is taking place on the back of you. So anytime you find she's going to pass, turn your back and put a stand up, eh? So it's locked in your back. Oh, you scored um, in the first quarter, 16 out of 17, 18 out of 19 in the second. Sister, you had 2 out of 2 in the first and 1 out of 2 in the second. Because he was looking, he looked. He was looking at yeah. And he was very nice in the way he said it actually. He gave, he gave a thing. Right, Kelly, come and sit round here. Girls, but it's only 10, 20 points. It's only 20, eh? We did 15 the other day. So. We, I tell you something, we are making them think. They are having to work so much harder. And that's what we want. Now, we have got to convert, as I say, we still keep to our simple things. 75% of our shooting has to go in on the centre pass. So we're starting nil nil again, and we're going to see how we go with that. Simple, stage three as much as possible. As much as possible. Hang on for even more this quarter. How do you know when you're doing a stage three? You feel, feel it, you feel, feel it. You feel the sweat. Sorry, but it's a you're knackered. knackered. Yeah. <laughs> and you, but you, you are them. feeling them, yeah? Up close yeah, and personal. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go. With some thoughts for 
uh, the Gibraltarian team. Uh, she says 75% of shots in the centre pass have to go in. How, how are you interpreting that exactly? I think basically what she's saying is um, you need to score off your own centre pass yes. if you want to win the match. Um, is 75% perhaps low balling that slightly? Um, Am I being unkind? I think probably more to get into a shooting opportunity is, yeah. a, um, is a good way to describe it. Um, because obviously the, the Granada defence has been putting them under an awful lot of pressure, but um, once they get into a shooting opportunity, then... Well, we were just discussing just off, off air as we were listening to uh, the... as we were listening to the team... Uh, to the team talk. You know, we'd love to actually see... I, I'm afraid I'm not Opta, so I don't have all these stats. Uh, I, I'll, I'll mention it to Netball Europe as a bit of feedback that we should uh, we should really be employing some uh, some kind of uh, stats driven uh, data analysis tools so that we can uh, we can have these things to hand. Um, but uh, you know, you were saying it, actually, if we looked at the, the shooting opportunities that Gibraltar have had, the, the, the situation has not got any better in the, the last quarter. In fact, arguably, it's not worse. Uh, and that could be fatigue at the end of a long day. Yep, both teams um, have played two matches at this stage, so fitness is going to come into play. Um, but I think if we were to look at the amount of shooting opportunities that both teams have had, um, Gibraltar might be a bit disappointed that the scoreline isn't closer um, from the amount of opportunities that they've had and that they haven't been able to, to capitalise on. There's a enterprising sound man and coach Oberon we'll just hear what she has to say just at the end of the half let's talk some more on the court let's talk tight up on the defence too much ball yeah for the ball well make sure you what can you do Mm -hmm. Let me just pop Oh, okay. Don't want to do it. Yeah, to pop for the ball, eh? Yeah, to pop in front for the ball. I don't let's go. Let's go. Let's go. When we done the double room, you are the goal with a win attack and I pick up the So there we go, uh, last opportunity to see the huddle. Are we going to see the huddle? I think we are. So the last quarter of the last match of the day. And uh, oh it's quarter three start I'm sort of getting ahead of myself now, so <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, quarter three. Two quarters to go, one half. We're into the last half of the last <laughs> match of the day. A uh, couple of changes to tell you about uh, in the <laughs> Substitution. So Tiffany Frederick is off uh, to be replaced uh, by Rennie Cooper at centre. And uh, instead, Tiffany Frederick is going to move to wing attack, which I think would suggest that Sharon Jeremiah is being relieved of that responsibility. Uh, but I'll uh, try and confirm that point, I think. would seem to suggest that. Uh, the Gibraltar changes. Lanaya uh, of Kanya is uh, back to her position goalkeeper as the Gibraltarians put another goal on the board. Uh, Kelly Ann Samperi is back on at goal defence. Zenia Reyes moves back to wing defence. And we see the introduction of Luis Rodriguez at goal attack with Kelly 
Shaori moving to goal shooter. Now that's an interesting move, Nolan, because we were talking again uh, just a moment ago about how dominant Shaori is as the, the main provider of, of goals, but yet she's the goal attacker and not the goal shooter. So they moved her to goal shooter now, uh, and I wonder how that changes how they, um, how they approach the play around the circle. Um. Shari is a very dominant player and she's able to find the space and a lot of the ball is going through her. Um, maybe whenever she's in the goal shooting role, um, she'll have a bit more time to settle. She won't have so much work to do out the court um, that she'll be able to settle and um, get the feet of goals going through the goal shooter in this quarter. It's just a hard job for Okanya in there because um, the Grenada and, um, attacker just finding that space to Kato so easily. And she just slots another one away. Rodriguez there making an impact. That's the kind of ball that only one person's going to get. <laughs> ah, but. Yeah, she gets a second chance at it. And a big smile. <laughs> and the hand uh, up just to apologise to her teammates for that. And uh, almost uh, making its way through to Rodriguez there. It just uh, tipped out of her reach. by Denise Cameron. Again, that high ball up to Kato working to good effect. It rolls, it rolls, it rolls. Have another crack. There you go. Pop. That's what I was told. But pop it. All in the flick. It's all in the, it's all in yep. the wrist. Caitlin Bassett told me that. She's given a lesson on how to shoot. And she should know. She should know. I wasn't very good. You what? I wasn't very good. You just need more practice, and that's I mean, all. I, and I'm tall. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, when I was at, at, at school, I was terrible at basketball. There were guys much shorter than me that could slam dunk the ball. And here's me at six foot five, and I was <laughs> awful. I could barely bounce the ball, never mind slam dunking. Ah, and that's a good, uh, good finish there by Shari. Gap just increased a little to 24. And Rodriguez makes herself available, gets in front of her marker, in front of Cameron. But, um, and another great opportunity there, did all the hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, great yes, interception, well roars of uh, approval as uh, Kanya jumps in the way of Kato. Really flew, uh, flew past her there. And that's a big bonus for Okanya because she's been working so hard in this game and then as soon as the opportunity has come, she's make the most of it. Moreno uh, working hard to make herself available in the middle. 
Shirey possibly just a little bit too clever there, uh, giving the eyes. But uh, she'll get possession. And a free shot to Rodriguez. Got a hop. Gibraltar are really trying to find the front space every time in the circle, but then the Granada defence are trying to hold them back, so then um, if they can't use a dodge or if they can't swing the ball, then it's really hard for them to get that space and get the shot off. And, uh, great interception there by uh, D and Gooding. I have to be very specific about the, the D and bit because there's also a D and there's a D and and there's a D and. I just want, I want to be clear about that. Just in case you're wondering why I was over enunciating D and, that is the reason. to look to make a quick restart. And uh, good play there against, out all right. <laughs> against Rodriguez into shooting position. She's not quite got the uh, accuracy you would have hoped for, but Shao was there with the rebound. And they acknowledge each other. You can see Okanya just dropping off to try and get a bit of a run and jump um, to get at those balls coming into Cato. <laughs> see the smile on her faces. <laughs> Possibly accepting the futility of uh, that, that particular yeah. effort. Uh, Rodriguez again making herself available at the top of the circle and they work it round well there through uh, Moreno. Uh, the centre and back into Shaori. Working those nice triangles, which gets the um, the shooter onto the front space to get the ball, which is what Gibraltar are really working for. So I'd say probably a, a little more effective just with that switch at the, uh, the top of the court for for Gibraltar in, in making better use of Shaori as the uh, as the goal shooter and bringing Rodriguez in as more of a playmaker and Rodriguez there chipping in with a good finish of her own from range Certainly a better quarter for Gibraltar. Having lost the the last quarter, 19-1. No, 19-9. Seven. 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 Bad writing is a seven. Looks like a one. Really <laughs> confusing. Eight down in, in this quarter. Still four and a half minutes to go. Scottish Thistles warming up. The last team to practice this evening. Oh 
wayward pass there gives the ball back to Granada. just hard to get that last ball into the circle if um, the Granada defence are pushing them out towards the circle edge then they just need to peel off and create some sort of rotation and then everything will reopen up again for Gibraltar. Gibraltar just stalled slightly in the last minute and a half. So, worked better though. And two players making the same run though. I think that's one of the real strengths of the Gibraltar team at the minute. They're not trying to force the ball in, they're trying to look to reset each time and, and get a better option. Even if it means going back to the third line. Rodriguez now back out. And Shouri does well just to leverage Cameron out of the way, giving herself the space, and uh, she gets the free shot, and that's uh, a welcome point for Gibraltar. We have another opportunity here. It's coming up to the last two minutes of the quarter. Shouri with the chance. That's another good shot. Gives herself a, a reassuring clap. Just to keep going. Cato in even more space than usual. Granada defence there. Um, just doing a really good job of stopping. Shari coming forward for that ball. Yeah, the, uh, the goalkeeper Gooding there uh, making a nuisance of herself and uh, Shari penalised in the end for contact with her. <laughs> Again, you can see Akanya just trying to give herself a couple of yards to, <laughs> to have a run and uh, just off camera there, just shaking her head ruefully at her effort. Time out there, called uh, by the umpire. Just a little bit of a talking to for uh, Grenade and uh, wing defence, who is uh, Renee Cooper. Can't be right, surely. Seems to have gone over in her ankle here. According to So back with play. New rules means that any injury means the person actually has to come off the court regardless, but it looks like Cooper's in a wee bit of pain here, so um, um, he's had to go off the court. Keep going off the court regardless. I'm going to take a stab at that. Um, Nolan and say that's actually Keshini's good thing. Interception there by Arcania, and you can hear the roars of the Gibraltarian fans really appreciative of her efforts back there. And she acknowledges that uh, with a smile and a keep it down, folks, don't embarrass me uh, sort of wave. Um, I, I, I'm going to take a stab and say actually that the, uh, the injured player there, 
playing at wing defence is Keshinis Mitchell. Um, although, uh, as uh, that last goal brings the quarter to an end, although Keshinis, I'm going to be absolutely honest with you, does not appear anywhere, anywhere on any substitution or team sheet changes that I've received uh, in this match. But it certainly looks like her. Um, so apologies if it isn't. I think it is, and I'm happy to be uh, happy to be told I'm wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted that my struggles with team sheets are coming to <laughs> coming to an end after this quarter, and it can be somebody else's problem from tomorrow. Um, it's been uh, great having you all with us uh, throughout the day. This is uh, my last game. Um, of this uh, tournament and Anita Navin from Sky Sports and from England Netball's uh, own coverage uh, of the, the their live streaming of their Netball Super League she's um, a regular commentator on that uh, and she'll be with you for the remaining three days of competition here in Northumbria so you can look forward to that and Anita can look forward to the trials and tribulations of substitutions and team changes uh, and uh, uh, while we uh, think more about that up here, uh, let's listen in to what Sarah Pies is saying. So you to now her. hang off as well. Look as though you're dropping back with Vinaya and then try and come out for the goal attack there. Just to change that bit up a bit there. We've played it back well there. We've played it back and we've not done so much forcing. Good shooting, good movement. So that's really good. Really good movement. Okay. For this quarter, you're going to come off and rest and we're going to bring Keisha on. Keisha is slow and calm and not going offside, otherwise you're going to get a bottle of ketchup on your head, all right? Not one offside, all right? Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. I think we'll just put it in here. I feel like I can get the pass if I have the timing into the short because she puts it down here because she feels like I do have that tendency to come down. Okay. Other than that, I mean, I think restricting has restricting has messed them up a bit because they're not they're not enjoying it, which is really nothing. <laughs> you just take every shot, every opportunity. We've had all those in. She's coming. She's coming. So some entertaining words there from Sarah Pye. She's. Uh, identified the one change that we'll have for Gibraltar which is that Keisha Moreno is coming on uh, at wing attack and uh, she's saying to Keisha don't be offside or you're getting a bottle of ketchup on your head. <laughs> now, it's an uh, interesting way to motivate uh, a player. Uh, each to their own. Each to their own. Uh, what wasn't clear was whether it was a glass bottle, a plastic <laughs> bottle, whether the ketchup was coming out of the bottle over her head or whether she was just getting hit with a bottle. You'd like to hope so, it out of the bottle? Yeah, I'm hoping it's got to be like, <laughs> champ you know, like sprayed with champagne instead with tomato yeah. ketchup. So so there we go. So Keisha Moreno's coming on. And for your own sake, Keisha, don't stray offside. But more crucially there, Sarah Pye is really happy with... Uh, the, the fact that they're, they're not forcing it, they're moving better, and they're taking better advantage uh, of the, the shooting spaces that they're getting themselves into by being more clinical in front of the net. And I think that was reflected in the scoreline of that quarter where it was 11 20. Um, you know, Granada still able to get the ball to Cato and put it away, so that's a given. But um, Gibraltar were able to put away 11 goals in that quarter, so I think they'll be very happy with that. So Renee Cooper gets us off and running for the final quarter, and this is knowing the final quarter of the final game of the day. Um, uh, one change in the Grenada team. Uh, the player that we thought went off, uh, we thought certainly was Keshinese Mitchell, uh, and in her place uh, is Carissa Thomas at wing defence. And I'm feeling reasonably confident about that assertion, but that is Carissa Thomas at wing defence. So, mm. 
there are ob quite some quite obvious other changes uh, on court. Uh, notably, goal attack has changed, and nobody's told us about it. I get that. I'm, I'm going home. I'm going home. Fourteen more minutes. <laughs> It's business as usual for Granada. They just bring that ball up to Cato again and she puts it away. And uh, certainly for Granada, that's now a very formidable uh, partnership up front in terms of height. Uh, both goal attacker and goal shooter really towering above their. Uh, respective opponents. And uh, we'll see if there is confirmation of, of that change as we go. I suspect there won't be. I want to say it's Renisha Stafford who's come on, but uh, 100% sure from where, I've sit, where I'm sitting. That's a lovely ball by Shire. She can get back into the middle. Just, uh, just been rubbing that right shoulder of hers uh, maybe for the last 15 or 20 minutes. Just noticed a few little twinges, just perhaps feeling the strain. I bet maybe she got a, a bump in some contact earlier. She's having to work really hard to hold her position or to get a good position in that circle, so she might have just taken a wee knock. Let's uh, take another look online. This is your last chance to tweet. Nice rebound there. If you've been enjoying today's oh, coverage. Ryan, she puts another one away. So Gibraltar moved to 31, 61, 31. Uh, 11 and a half minutes left. Um, any open 16 is the hashtag. And you can let us know what you've thought of today's play, today's coverage. Teresa Thomas. And long ball up to Kato again, working so well. Uh, Alison, uh, who's watching somewhere, says, I know you play to your team's strength, but the long bomb into a ridiculously tall goal shooter makes for boring netball. Chin up Gibraltar. <laughs> There you go. Chin up Gibraltar. I think that's echoed but every time that um, Okanya gets a touch to the ball, I think everybody appreciates the hard work that she has to do. Well, you can hear it uh, here with the, the crowd that's Absolutely. here this yeah. evening watching. They certainly appreciate the, uh, the work that she's putting in. Uh, and I think at the other end as well, I think there's an appreciation when Gibraltar do put good passing moves together and that uh, access from uh, Moreno to uh, Rodriguez and, and Shauri works that um, it, it's interesting to watch. Uh, it's good to see and that actually they're acquitting themselves, and certain, particularly in that third quarter, have acquitted themselves well. Moreno just uh, getting tangled up there with uh, Carissa Thomas. Who at uh, 
A young age is already uh, six foot one. Wing defender for Grenada. Relative newbie to the team, having uh, played at under 16 level and uh, made her way up into the under 21s and under 23 squad. Still very young, but tall. And uh, Abel has uh, made a, a good impact since uh, coming on. We can see from a commentary position. Uh, the person we think is Kessinese Mitchell <laughs> uh, with uh, an ice pack and strapping around the left ankle. Uh, it's been a day for injuries, actually, Nolene. I think that's the fourth, fourth player. Ankle injuries? Uh, three knees, one ankle. But it's been, um, it's just been one of those days that have just been a little bit unlucky. And that's now two, in fact, of the Grenadian team because uh, Diane. John earlier on in their first match uh, was twisted a knee. And uh, trying to remember who the other player was that was in. Trice, the Maltese player. Uh, injured in their first game as well. So, chance here for Gibraltar. And Shari's uh, got her eye in at the moment. Uh, they move on to 34. Into the last half of this quarter. And uh, there's that long bomb again that uh, Alison uh, was not enjoying. Sue Tyler has the coverage up on her television. I can't tell if she's posted this on Twitter because she wants us to see that she's watching it or because she's infringing our copyright and she <laughs> sharing content she shouldn't be. But you know what? The more the content gets shared, the better because, frankly, uh, we want more people watching uh, this content throughout Europe and throughout the international netball community. And a lot of questions about why does it have to be pay-per-view. Uh, it, it is unfortunately just a simple case of economics. The uh, funding uh, uh, was not uh, sufficient to, to make uh, such an intense four-day tournament available for free. There has to be some kind of revenue model to pay for the production costs. Uh, and that's why it's pay-per-view. And uh, after a lot of negotiation, we felt that uh, Netball Europe board felt that it would uh, reached a, a price that was acceptable for everybody and I think 14.95 for 22 matches uh, for a month uh, represents very good value and certainly on the basis of some of the entertainment we've seen today uh, particularly from the, the two United States matches uh, I think that's borne out. Um, it, it isn't always ideal to do pay-per-view and it's certainly the ambition of everybody involved in Netball Europe and my own ambition as well that all the coverage that's provided uh, for Netball Europe fans is free to air and we're working very hard to make that achievable over the next 12 months. That's fantastic to hear because I think everybody loves the opportunity to watch Netball for people who can't travel to Newcastle to sit and watch the games and um, there's an opportunity to see their team playing um, these kind of competitions. It's, it's a great opportunity to, to be able to access it. It, it. it is a constant struggle for um, particularly for amateur sport, uh, it's a, you know, netball is, is not unique by any means in, it, in its struggle and how to uh, commercialise content or monetise content and how to make content good quality and engaging um, but at the same time be able to pay for it. So it's, um, you know, you, you see this uh, struggle uh, not just in, in the UK but across the world with international federations, with confederations with national governing bodies and and even you know down to to regional associations and, and club level and in a lot of sports as well and you, know, you, you look at England netball's model uh, of live streaming of uh, netball super league matches as well you know it's great that they're able to do that from what one of their matches every week one of their non-broadcast matches every week 
but ultimately that has to be a driver to get more people to sign up as members of England Netball and, and create a revenue stream for them because there is a commercial reality to, uh, to running these organisations that the only way you get to invest in talent and coaches and development pathways and, and, and also in marketing your sport properly is, is ultimately to, you know, to have a, a financial model that works for you. So it's, uh, it is a constant challenge and I, I have noted a couple of comments on Twitter throughout the day that just regarding the, the fact that it is a pay-per-view service but we hope you feel that it's value for money and we hope you'll tell your friends that it's value for money because the more that we can encourage people to watch this content and the better data and analytics that we can uh, draw from it at the, the end of the tournament the better chance we have of, of being able to attract sponsors into the sport and being able to attract commercial partners in the future. Meanwhile, there's some netball Not going happening on. Not here. <laughs> Grenada have uh, now opened up spaces uh, all over the court and uh, have hit 80 with that goal from Cato, who surely must be deserving of a rest at some point soon. I mean, she's done the business here. <laughs> I think it potentially would have been an opportunity to rest Cato at this point in time, you know, for Granada to... To in, play their bench in, and in fairness to play it, a different style. In fairness to it, she doesn't have to move very much. No. <laughs> she's not, you know, let's be honest, she's not busting a gut there. She's uh, She has a, a huge advantage uh, in, in height. and um, you but can, Obviously, if, that dictates a certain style of play that Granada are going to play then. So, absolutely. whenever, if she's not available or if she's not on the court, then what is the option for? Granada watch their style of play then it would be interesting for I think the people here as well to see that too well I think I'd love to see them play the USA and see what happens that would be interesting and that one she can't reach and uh, it, it's never sporting to cheer the misfortune of an opponent necessarily you want to cheer your own good fortune uh, but that uh, small bit of misfortune for <laughs> Cato did get a cheer uh, here in uh, Sports Central at Northumbria University uh, and uh, I mean, if you could see this end of the court, you, I don't know if one of the other cameras can actually show us the other end of the court quickly, um, but you can uh, perhaps not. We don't want to miss any of the action at this end, but uh, Okanya is, is ta taking up a very advanced position. Again, there, there you can see, and that, that's how little, what little interest she has in, in marking Cato. So she's taking a good, Three meter run up, I say two and a half meter, uh, three meter run up, uh, just to um, just to have a chance at intercepting. Good play there by Rodriguez and Keisha Moreno, and Rodriguez puts that away and Gibraltar move on again. And uh, still, you know, they're they're still playing some some good netball, Gibraltar. Uh, and another bit of misfortune for Cato uh, goes rewarded with uh, with a cheer. Poor Cato, she's really done nothing to deserve this other than just being tall. And, you know, if, if people if people cheered every time I hit my head off the, off the door of a train, I would feel quite bad about it, to be honest. Um, maybe they do, maybe I just don't notice, but I do hit my head off train doors quite a lot. I think it's more just to get Okanya um, to acknowledge Encouragement. Them. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm teasing. <laughs> Shouty now uh, with a chance and just rolls around the rim. Rodriguez will uh, retrieve it. She did retrieve it and tried to just uh, quickly pop it back to uh, uh, the centre. Uh, Joel Moreno, of course. And Keisha Moreno now just pushing that ball wide. Uh, not related, as I understand it. Talking about a dynasty, but it's just a common, uh, common name. So, Joel and uh, Janice are sisters, and Keisha Moreno is a friend. So that's the relationship between the Morenos. And uh, that little tidbit of information brings us to a close at the end of day one at the Netball Europe Open Championships. Grenada have triumphed uh, over Gibraltar, 82 points to 38. Plenty there though for Gibraltar.
some good strong arms over the ball by Switzerland. It's just about keeping themselves in the game. They're just getting caught on the contacts, but so many early errors for both teams. So it's tidy up time on court.